Hi everybody, welcome to Wool and Wine, episode 29. I'm Tammy. I'm Claudia. I'm Janet. And welcome back to all of our viewers. And if you're new, this is a knitting podcast and we're happy to have you. Yes, we are. We are. <laughs> and today is Halloween, the 31st oh, of October. Halloween. And we are recording here in Bellbrook, Ohio, which is just a south suburb of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, and it's a beautiful day, although we had a big freeze last night. We sure we did. did. We got up to a frost on the ground yeah. everywhere. I think I love it was, it. what, 29 degrees Fahrenheit is what they were saying? Well, when I got, when up, I got up, it was 31. Oh, okay. I was... <laughs> but, you know, it could have gotten down to 29. <laughs> Who knows? So it's sweater weather. It is <laughs> sweater weather. We are so happy <laughs> that we can wear sweaters. Yeah, no kidding. So this is going to be a regular episode. Um, last week, if you didn't watch was our Rhinebeck recap and it's really the Rhinebeck weekend with all the festivities that happen around that that we mm -hmm. attended and um, gosh we met so many wonderful people oh, I yes, know we, we did. did it was just that we, was just made my heart happen yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of lots and lots of new friends out there yeah it's mm -hmm. so good to put faces with names and, yeah. and actually touch people in 3D. <laughs> yeah, it was memorable for yeah, sure. Yeah, we're huggers. We, <laughs> we hugged everybody we could get our hands on. <laughs> so, okay, well gosh, um, before we get started, cheers, cheers. to you, lovely viewers. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, that's delicious. Mm. Mm. Yum. And again, I'm setting it way back yum, out of the yum. way. So, Good. we should probably start off talking about what we're wearing. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Quite colorful today. I know. <laughs> oh, look, we look springy, fally colors. So, <laughs> anyway, you'll see the video because we just did one of the our wearing our our sweaters. But um, this is the Tofino Sand by Natalie V. And I knit it in the Marisol Huni um, Peridot colorway. And just so you can maybe get a little better view of the 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 yoke. Lots of bobbles, which was a lot of fun. It is fun. Actually, yes. it was fun to knit and. I don't know. I really, really like this. I really like it. You were supposed to put baubles down on these little spots here, but I thought they looked out of place, so I didn't do it. <laughs> it looks perfectly fine. It doesn't look like it's missing anything. Yeah. So. so the story on this sweater was that I started it, and how far did I get? I got probably down to up all the almost all the lace was or not. I don't know what you call it. Um, cables, maybe twists. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Anyway, so I almost got that down to here. And I was putting it on, and Tammy's like, oh my gosh, that's going to be too big. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was really big. I remember that was a sad day. It was a sad day. <laughs> so I had to go rip it out. I went home, and I. So what I did is I put it down on my counter, and I got my winder, my ball winder. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I hooked it up to my ball winder, and I just went. Oh. So easy. Yeah. Well, that is 100% um, wool, right? Yes. Non super wash. Yes. So you could spit splice. Yes. Although no spit is actually involved in spit splicing. <laughs> it can be if you really want. I guess it could be, but a little, little water and some friction goes a yeah. long way. So I'm trying to think if I made any modifications. So for my size, there was some more. It was supposed to go down further, but I was looking at the the project pages of people and I didn't like the look of it. Oh, okay. So, so just I just did it. Just I just stopped deep. it where one of the other ladies did and I just like it better. It looks gorgeous. Way. It looks mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be that way. So. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Wow. Nice. That's it. Yeah. There's and, so much depth in that color. Oh, I know. There's so, it's like dark green and light green and kind of a golden kind color. Kind of a gold underneath. color. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really pretty. Yeah. I can't, yeah. you know, it's, it's not coarse, but it's not as soft as a lot of 
Uh, wool. Yeah, it's a sturdy workhorse. Kind it's of a wool. very. It sturdy. reminds me a lot of Wool of Day Andes yeah. from Knit Picks. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it. just a really nice, yeah, firm, it low, is high twist. And I think, um, and I have some more of this, of course. <laughs> I have some. I haven't used yet. <laughs> I'm thinking of a um, a. Uh, cardigan i think this yarn would be really really good with a cardigan well it would because it's got it's, so much structure it to does. it does yeah. yeah it really does so yeah it's beauty thank you and you're wearing a beautiful bracelet I today i am and who gave this to me and you did there you go <laughs> i had mine on last week you have yours on this week I although did. i should have it would match what i'm wearing so, yes. what are you wearing, Miss Janet? <laughs> I am wearing the Throwover by Andrea Mowry. And. <laughs> <laughs> modeling on the modeling however you probably couldn't see that <laughs> this is my first stranded color work project as far as a garment yeah that wow. turned out so good and oh yeah, I'm, you did I'm a great job just tickled with it it was just fun and um i enjoyed it a lot so the yarns that i used in this was the Winterburn Aaron from Bar Ram U and the colorway Muck. <laughs> <laughs> and for the color work section, I used the Yarn Hero Merge Worsted Weight and the colorway Coastal. So in this particular pattern, um, Andrea Mowry recommends that you use five, five different yarns, I think, for this one. Yeah. Or, or a spin cycle. But I just used this lovely Merge Worsted from Yarn Hero, and it turned out absolutely it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. It's yeah. striped really nice. It so did. All the color it did. Changes. It's so cool. The yes. Way, the it's center just... of your zigzags, it's one color. You know, it's like you uh -huh. did it on purpose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like I really worked hard on this color work, and... Uh, I didn't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you did. So, but, yeah. Beautiful. So I'm very happy with it. Okay. And it's all spit spliceable. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, all right. non super wash. Yeah. So yarn. now you brought up Yarn Hero. So we were looking at that, looking for them at Rhinebeck. They were yeah. supposed to have been in Barn 39 or something. Something like that. Yeah. And we looked all over for them and couldn't find them. So I don't know if something happened at the last minute and they weren't able to show up or if they ended up in somebody else's booth and we missed them somehow. But we just love that yarn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, we all have it and mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty fabulous. And now we've got new yarn. I know. New color changing yarn. I know. Oh, yeah. Try. So yeah, we did do. That's really cool. Um, okay, so I am wearing the Love Note by Tin Can Knits. And this is an oldie. So um, I knit the 44 and a half size on this, and it's quite oversized. There's quite a bit of positive ease, but I just love this. And I did do a modification. I only have two rows of the um, lace, and, or two repeats of the lace instead of four that come with. Mm -hmm. Especially doing the bigger size, I was afraid it would be like way below my bra line, which mm -hmm. that would just not be, that wouldn't be good. This way, I feel like it shows a little bit, but it's not too, too much. So mm -hmm. that's kind of good. So um, I did this in Hedgehog Fibers Skinny Singles in the colorway Monarch. And if you have ever used that, you know that it's a very light, bright, like very yellow and orange and hot pink yarn but holding it together with primrose yarn company um they have a plume kid silk mohair and it is the colorway spiced <laughs> let me say that again spiced curry and it really 
tones down the brightness of it. But man, do I love these two together. It makes it really wearable. And I'll tell you what, three quarter sleeves for me, I run hot. I don't, mm -hmm. and it's not hot flashes. This is just, I get too, too warm. So I think I'm gonna start looking at trying to make a lot of things three quarter length or just very loose sleeves. So I don't have so much touch in me. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just. That's very beautiful. Thank it you. Is so Halloween. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, that was, it is, today is October 31st. 31st. So the trick or treaters will be out today from six to 8 p.m. Uh -huh. Eastern time. And we're looking forward to it. We bought all the candy, oh gosh, a few weeks ago and all ready, set, go. Do you have a lot of kids here? We do. You know, they come, <laughs> they come to our neighborhood in bus loads, like <laughs> like minivan loads of kids. You know, it's like they pull up and all. Oh, I don't know here how they, they come. Yeah, I don't even know how they can all be in seat belts, but like a whole bunch of little people jump out <laughs> and scurry around with parents. And yeah, I mean, it's it seems like too many people. It almost looks like a clown car with everybody <laughs> piling out. But we see it over and over and over again. So I guess we have good candy in this neighborhood. I guess. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, uh, there have been years I had nobody. Nobody comes. See, yours would be a good one too, because it's not even hilly here. There's a lot of, our houses are high or low from yeah. the street, and there's steps to go up and down. So it's probably not the best neighborhood, yeah. but man, it doesn't keep them from coming. So well, I'm last not, year I had quite a few, so. <laughs> I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we haven't fun. had any in our neighborhood at all. Oh wow! For the last five years. Wow. I mean, you have kids next door now. They moved We down. have several kids now. And so, I don't know, we got candy just okay. in case. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have any finishes? No, I don't. Do you have a finish? No finishes. Okay, I have two. So, okay, you guys, you're gonna love this. So, my <laughs> girlfriend Sandy asked me if I would make her a witch's hat, so I did. I made that this. Is so cute. <laughs> this is the felted witch's hat by Mo Williams. And I did this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. And let me pull it, get it right up here. I felted it in the washing machine yesterday. So it only took about two days to maybe a day and a half to knit actually. And man, I took a leap of faith. It's called the Felted Witch's Hat. Um, it's a 23 inch and it only comes in one size. So good news, her head is 23 inches. Um, <laughs> I'm going to fix your hair. It's sticking Am out. Am I sticking out from my hair? There we go. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I knit it on a size 9 needle, which, I mean, it was super loose and floppy, and it's top down. So you start off with an I-cord and do your increases. And um, It's a free pattern, but honestly, I would tell you what kind of increases if I kind of remembered. But it's very clearly written. So anyway, when it was all done, I threw it in the washing machine on a hot, um, normal cycle, I think the cotton cycle, with a big bath towel and a pair of blue jeans and let it run clear up until I thought it was about to drain. And I stopped it and opened, and I was glad I did because it was already felted. So just the initial wash cycle. I mean, wow. it hadn't even begun to rinse. Huh. It hadn't done a spin at all. And actually in the pattern, they recommend that you don't let it go through a spin cycle because it can um, fold it and put like almost a permanent crease. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I was glad I got it out when I, when I did. So I ended up, I just kind of lifted it over to the laundry room sink and rinsed it in cool water and squeezed it. I couldn't hurt it. It was, our, you know, I felted it on purpose. But right, man, that's it amazing. It was that's... an absolute shock. This thing was ginormous before I put it in there. And you're like, oh, I hope she's going. Away. <laughs> I know. I can't. I. You have no idea. Once you close the door and it starts flipping around, you really have no control over anything mm -hmm. at that point. Wow. But I, yeah. So I bought <laughs> a felting kit online on Amazon and it should come today. And the brim isn't, so the top of it stands up pretty good. 
um, I'm going to put a wire in here because that's how it's supposed to go. But I feel like the brim should not be quite so floppy. So I'm going to get it wet and just wet felt it and try to make it a little bit stiffer <laughs> and uh, see how that works out. Wow. But so Sandy's. I love it. Yeah. That is so yeah, fun. Yeah, I thought it was That's really very cool. fun. A yeah. couple of videos. Arnie and Carlos had one talking about felting slippers. That was one of their color work patterns. And um, I can't even remember who the other one was. But I will link the Arnie and Carlos one below. Um, just I'd like so, to see that. Yeah, too, just actually. so you can see how they recommend it. I think they were using floor soap. And I'm like, mm, I don't. It's black. I didn't want it to. I, you know, did like you mi did you put soap? I in just there? put a regular pod in there because you know the jeans and the towel needed washed anyway. So. <laughs> okay, there you go. They went through the whole cycle after I took the hat out. <laughs> so it didn't bleed no. onto your other stuff. No. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Good. Well, it was a pair of dark jeans. It was Rick's because I don't wash my jeans in hot water. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, water. I don't know. I wasn't sure I know. about that. Yeah, but. Um, but the towel was fine. It's the actually, it's the towel that I do all my blocking with anyway. Oh. And I really don't care if that one gets root. I've got two that are great big bath sheets, and I can roll anything up and step on them mm -hmm. in that. And I've had stuff fade on them, and then you throw them in the wash, and it miraculously always comes out. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's the acid dye on cotton. Maybe. That yeah. it doesn't absorb it or whatever. So, um, what else do you have? I have another one, but boy, I feel like I have, uh, I only have two whips. So, you want to go ahead with one of your whips? Sure. And I then I'll that. go, I'll do my finish when it's time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I've been working on my cart, right? Because I. It's that time of year, and it's almost been a year since I started it. I got the front and back done. What? Yeah, wow. look at that. Oh, that. holy moly, look at that. Oh my gosh, you're going to have to oh, try it wow. on. Are you going to um, sew the shoulders together today while you're here? Yeah, probably. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if you've been following us, you know this has been a process. <laughs> It's taken a while. That's the back. Oh, that is so gorgeous. The only wow. thing, I wish I would have waited to separate the sleeves for another inch because it might be just a tad short. But Oh, no. Well. But it's fine. Can you go higher with the shoulders just so the sleeves are deeper? Well, then the sleeves will come down here. We'll show, I'll show it to you later. And yeah, we can figure yeah. it out. But yeah, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. It's, but I think, I don't know who was telling me, oh, it looks like you need to separate. Oh, yeah, I would say maybe just make the sleeves deeper. So anyway. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. More to come mm. on that. Yeah, yeah. But the yarn that I've used, oh, this is a Cartwright, and Jenny Atkinson is the designer. And I've used Cascade 220 fingering and um, charcoal, silver, lemon and white colorways so that's just beautiful yeah mm -hmm. and i'm sorry i'm short-waisted so if it doesn't fit you <laughs> i'll take it and then you can just start over yeah <laughs> right i should have had it followed the pattern like i was supposed to <laughs> so actually i think it's probably going to be fine yeah because i haven't blocked it yet and so once i do the the um sleeves i might just do a measurements and then do the sleeves because i want the sleeves to kind of match up with the yeah the color work on here right so maybe i'll just measure it and then do the sleeves and and block this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so because i know it's gonna block out a little bit anyway but honestly if you go an inch more on the shoulders it if your arm is only one inch shorter, that's not going to be a big deal. Well, I think what I'll have to do because of the way the, because I did, you know, it has been, you bind off for the, right. for the sleeve and then I can't do anything back. That's the front. I can't really do anything back here because you're always reducing the, Oh, I see. Yeah, so I can't do anything back here. This well, is you could always I make the top longer so that it flows over further. and where it attaches just, just goes back. Yeah, further it just goes back, back further. Yeah. 
I've thought That's about true. that. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you put, set your sleeve in, your seam is way back here, so you would make this part still be the top, even though you're right. The seam is there, so it, your arms aren't <laughs> twisted. Yeah, <laughs> more to come. <laughs> well, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely. Yeah. So well, what do you have? Okay, I'll start out here with my Wilfrida by Venki Ruald. Oh yeah. And since I've last showed this, oh, she I was way at the top, and I've got the entire body portion completed. And I'm just starting mm. on one of the sleeves at this point. So, making some pretty nice progress on this. Wow. That's so pretty. See. Thank you. So the yarn that I'm using is this Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. And the colorway on this is Mesa. That's a perfect name for it. Yeah, that is really gorgeous. And so far, this is a cone. These are one of their discontinued cones that they have at Brooklyn Tweed that they don't have anymore, <laughs> I should say. But uh, this is 660 yards. And I am making the size small, I think it is, which is a size 40. And I'm still on my 660 yards. So yeah. wow. it's not That's using amazing. a lot of, of yarn for that. What gauge is so, that? That's really It nice. is a, I think the gauge on this is 18 yeah, stitches for 4 inches. I would say about an 18. Look at yeah. that. Really yeah, beautiful. it's so pretty. Yeah. And it feels good too. And you're doing that on a size 10. 10. Oh, a 10. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Size nice. 10. So these are the kind of projects you like on your needles. Uh, yeah. They, they go sure. relatively quickly. Yeah. Yes. They and do. not a lot of yarn. And I'm just, I'm amazed that I still have so much of this yarn left. So. And it's pretty amazing. That's, that's good. A, yeah. That's yeah. A great. Yeah. So. Very nice. I should be able to get this done pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Excited wow. to wear it. Man, that collar is so good, too. It makes yeah. me just think that that would be super cute in a short sleeve. Like in it a, would be. In like a mm -hmm. cotton-ish yeah. weight. I mean, is that DK or? Right. It it's is DK. DK. Yes. Okay, yeah. So it's DK weight. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. All right. Well, I have the Bentley Cardigan by Marie Green. and. I finally finished that. Um, I think the last time I showed it, I had just a little bit left. And so here it is. The sleeves are done with their little split. And I ended up, I couldn't decide on a black or a gold button, so I stacked them. And it just gives it kind of a little bit of interest. Um, but it's really cute. and. <laughs> It looks to me very blue on the camera. It's funny, it's between a black and a blue. Um, the yarn that I used is Dream in Color Colossal Sock, and that was made for Simply Sock Yarn Company. Um, the color of this is blurry eyed. I can you see, I think the detail is in there of all the little speckles. Yeah. That are amongst the, um, the black. It's got all these golds and rusts and kind of a greeny yellow. Um, Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering is what I used for the button band. Well, there's no buttons, but the, the band and the neck and the cuffs. So that colorway is Portsmouth. And I did helical knit this. No, you know what? I didn't do it in the round, so it's not helical. I alternated skeins. I went down and back with one color, down and back 
with another one with the right. same right. same separate skein separate skein same color i was just afraid it was going to pool funny mm -hmm. and it did not pool funny it, it had a really cool stripe to it though mm -hmm. um, i've got plenty of that yarn left mm -hmm. so i intend to make some socks out of it because you know now i know that it doesn't pool in a weird way yeah, that'd be, I think that'd be great. That'd be yeah. yeah, glad to have that done. And I did. That is the forty-one inch ish. I figured having it over, like over a card or the cardigan over a blouse or over some kind of a top will be. You want that little bit of extra room, mm -hmm. just right. in case. So right. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So you have a whip, right? Oh, yes, I have. I have whips. <laughs> whip me up. Um, so this is the Souk Moon by Ageo Knit. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I'm using the Juniper Moon Farm Patagonia Organic Merino and drops kid silk in the blue wind color the back end of mm -hmm. and look the, at that oh you got the body done the body's done so pretty and i have the sleeve started just barely wow <laughs> and so this has a little bit of a, a not really a balloon sleeve but just maybe just a little bit of one because it has a you don't do any decreases. To, oh, okay. So you it's get, just a straight mm -hmm. sleeve with mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. wrapping. That is just. And oh. I blocked it, and then I was a really super happy with how it blocked out. It was so drapey. I mean. Oh well, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. So on the camera, it makes it look like it's very navy. Yeah, that's and so funny. I thought I had a little. Oh, right here. I got a little issue here. Oh. That might be where your mohair ran out or something so i bet you can fix that real easy yeah i'm gonna have to <laughs> looks like it's, right looks like a drop stitch and that came through here oh boy <laughs> anyway it'll get the i'll have to fix that before i move on with that yeah so did you show the yarn that you use oh, because holding those two together just makes it so mm -hmm. amazing i know it looks like it's a navy blue but it, this is anthracite uh see if it there we go now you can see it so it's very dark it's not quite black and then this is the drops killed sick kill <laughs> <laughs> we're having a hard Kids. time with yarn names today <laughs> kid silk unicolor and this colorway i said is blue wind so these two together it's just such a pretty Turned out to be such a pretty design. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really gorgeous. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing the way you held those two together. To I even know. Think that that would be so beautiful. Well, I just was at home one day and I thought about it. So, are you going to worry yourself? Wait till we get up there in the good light, and you'll be able to pick that stitch up. And... Yeah, it's got to come down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a drop stitch. Good thing I found it now. Yeah, rather than when you're wearing it. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so my next whip is the Solare by Hohi Locatelli. And I have been so excited working on this. So I've made some <clears throat> pretty big progress. So I was here, now I've, I'm working the body. And I've blocked this also so I could see see the fit and everything on this. Open it up a little bit. Oh wow. And so oh, nice. it's just so pretty. So the colors, the yarns and the colors I'm using are the first one is the Brooklyn Tweed uh, Arbor once again. And this is the colorway Rainier. And I'm holding it with this um, Hobie Alpaca Lace. And the colorway of that is Sage Melange. And it really adds some depth to the, the color it of does. the sweater. Yeah, it so. really does. 
It sure does. So yeah, I just, that is so beautiful. I'm loving working on this. Yeah. Wow. I can see why. Yeah. So I I made a little bit of variation on this, which I kind of did that. I did the same thing Tammy did, where I didn't put the last cable, and I had a little bit extra area before I quit the cabling because I didn't want it to pucker and and the with the regular body. Mm -hmm. So to be on the safe side, I did that. But I really, I, you can't even tell. Like, no, it's it just, looks like it's supposed to be that way. It looks like it's supposed to be that way. But we mm -hmm. saw that on um, the Ravelry pages. It didn't look like that on Hohe's. She might be a loose knitter. But some of the people, when they did that last row of cabling, it made it pucker, like right where it goes into the flat stocking at oh, fabric. Really? And I don't know right. if they put them on before they blocked them or what the deal was, but it was just, it happened enough times, you know, because I always look through pat project pages before making something and I went, eh, I don't think I want mine like that. Right. And if you do it too close to sleeve separation with the cable, really close to that, that's where the puckering happens yeah. because then you stop the cabling right there. So I was on the safe side and just didn't do that. But um, yeah, so yeah, you got really... gauge without making it super fluffy because mm -hmm. that that alpaca lace right. is really really nice. So this is a worsted weight. So mm -hmm. uh, holding a lace weight with um, a DK made it turn into this lovely soft yarn. Mm -hmm. So. Beautiful. I'm really happy with So that. is that your first skein of um This is my two? second skein of the uh, lace weight and this is the first skein still. Is it that's yeah, what you were yeah. asking me? This is the first skein and once again we're looking at six hundred and sixty yards. Wow. Yeah, you know, of course I don't have my body done yet, so I'll no. I'm sure I may not. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Up a yeah, lot of yarn cables, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that 660 yards is it goes a long way. Going a long way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So, that's really beautiful. The yarn it's, that keeps on giving. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta love that. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so. I am making the Wildwood sweater by Heidi May. And I am having quite the fun with this thing. So this is what the majority of what I worked on when we were away on our trip. And I did not bring the other color, but it's a little piece I right do like there. A piece. <laughs> um, so I'll show you the sweater first and then we can talk about the yarn. So here is the Wildwood sweater. Look at that gorgeous color work. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, I was a little concerned about this because the all of the increases on the sweater are done within the top they're, they're all done within six rows of each other, right at the very top, like shortly after you begin the color work. And I don't know about you guys, but that seems to me like an opportunity for some severe puckering. Yeah. So um. I, as soon as we got back from the trip, I blocked it before I went any further to make sure. And oh my gosh, I, oh, no, I, I just can't wait. So this it looks like it fits really well because this, it kind of, goes over your shoulder really nicely. Um, yeah, I think it it kind of sticks up when I have it on. Mm -hmm. It puckers right there. So when I block it with sleeves on and I'm really ready to block it to wear it, I'll roll a hand towel up mm -hmm. and make that so it's not. But you yeah. see how it kind mm -hmm. of, I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera or not, but it's it really does kind of pucker on the shoulder a little bit. It, it shapes it Maybe it is the shape on my shoulders. I don't yeah. know, but it does kind it of look like it fits a nice slope yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right at that spot. So I think the fit is going to be perfect. Um, I am so excited. So I get to use the, uh, what is it, Stephen West's West Wool Tandem, which is the DK weight. And I'm using the colorway Brackish. 
and glass. So both labels are for brackish. I guess I wrapped the one around um, the light glass color. Beautiful wool, absolutely beautiful. If you have an opportunity, go for it. This one is non-superwash. The bicycle yarn that I bought when I was there the last time in Amsterdam, not, not this most recent time, but the time before, I'm pretty sure is superwash. I haven't knit with it yet, so I'll have to get that back out, but I am having a really good time with this. That is some easy, beautiful color work. Beautiful. We've had our eyes on this for a long a time. A really long time. And I'm so glad to have finally started on it. I'm knitting the size 42 inch because the sizes, it's supposed to have a lot, like a 12 inches of what? positive ease, some, wow. some crazy big number of positive ease. And I went, yeah, I don't, I think so. I'm not down for that. So the 42 was the closest to what I could do and still, you know, get close to gauge. So that's gorgeous. It yeah. is beautiful. I'm loving it. I love the color. Yeah, I do. I don't think I have anything that color. The no. closest would be that um, the DRK everyday sweater that oh, I did in that. Yes, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was beautiful. But I really love that well, color. So I'm gonna have to. I'll wait till you get finished. And... <laughs> I got too much stuff going on now, but I really want to do that. Yeah, that's another one that is high on yeah. the list. Yeah, for sure. Okay. There are so many high on the list. I know there are. <laughs> <laughs> and they just keep getting more and more. Yeah. Well, yes. we have a lot of yarn that we just picked up, so we'll have to figure out when we're going to do our uh, the Letho, Letho together. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay, so I have another whip. <laughs> and I just... I think I started this since our last uh, podcast, and this is the um, Forager by Isabel Kramer, and I've had my eye on this for a really long time. And I actually was going to do it in more of a rusty color, but then I, I started to cast it on. I go, you know, I just did something in a tone like that, so I want something different. So I'm doing it in the... Um, Rowan Felted Tweed, and isn't that pretty? It's got all those little Gorgeous. speckles, <laughs> and I love it. But let's see, so this is, whoops, <laughs> throwing it around. Uh, this is the front, and those are not real cables. It's a, it's a mock, they call them mock cables. It's just, and it's so easy, it goes, and then it goes down the sleeve. And she has some really interesting ways she does her sleeves. Um, I don't know if you can see the sleeve cap here. It's just really interesting. And then there's one that goes down the back. And then, the, and then when you get down after, coat, after sleeve separation, there's some down the sides. That Pretty. was just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I love that color. Yeah. I don't fun? think you don't have anything hot pink. pink. I don't. That's why I said I need, I need some hot pink in my life. And I'm trying to remember what the colorway is. It's a bar, barbar, Barbara, <coughs> Barbara, colorway Barbara. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It is. I love yeah, it. Short, short for that would be Barbie. Barbie. That's, That's right. Barbie. That's a, oh, your and it's Barbie pink. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I have my Barbie sweater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. And actually, you know what? This is so easy to do. This little fake. The faux cable. The faux cable. I'm thinking if next time I do a raglan, I'm just going to do that on the raglan increases. Yeah. That um, would look beautiful. It yeah. really yeah. would. Yeah. Very simple. Nice. So, wow. Um, that's that. I haven't really done anything pretty. on that for a while, but I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't even. Have we even seen it? Maybe we saw I think it. I once. I took it, I did take it to Rhinebeck and I did do a little bit of work on it. But then I found myself going, oh, I'm screwing up too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, we did drink quite a bit of wine. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> so, oh, goodness. That's that one. <laughs> I know you've got more whips. I see a whole I do. I have three there. more whips to show. <laughs> 
So the next one is the Monday Sweater by Petite Knit. Oh, that's so pretty. And I haven't made a huge amount of progress on it, but I did want to show it. So, wow. Here's the progress I've made, which still working and on the sleeve before sleeve separation, but I'm getting there. Wow, that's really pretty. And that uh, so. progress keeper you have on there is mm. from one of our lovely viewers. Yes, all the project keepers today that you've been seeing is from one of our viewers. Love them. So pretty. The yarns that I'm using are two yarns. It is a DK weight, so I'm using this Good Wool from Pearl no, Soho no. in the colorway Lemon Meringue, and this is a sport weight. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding it with this Yasha and Lucy mohair with, and it's the colorway on it is Go Figure, Go Home. Oh no, it's, it's not Yasha and Lucy, it is the Sheepy Shire. And they were at the Cake Palooza this year at um, one of the satellite yarn festivals around Rhinebeck. But uh, yeah, this is the Sheepyshire Dandelion Mohair in colorway. Go figure, go home. Not to be confused with some other mohair that <laughs> Claudia gifted me. <laughs> wow, it's amazing how you think of the wrong one. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said that. I'm but, going, I don't think that's right. Yeah. That was but uh so i'm loving this too so um mm -hmm. gotta keep on yeah, those two colors together are just gorgeous yeah it's yeah. it's neat how you can hold a couple different yarns together and just come up with some mm -hmm. something so pretty that is lovely mm -hmm. okie dokie my next one is the field sweater by camilla vod mm -hmm. I am making great progress on this. So it's not even connected to a ball of yarn right now because I just bound off the body this morning. Oh, wow. So that is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at this beauty. That is gorgeous. And I was absolutely taken in by the one that Oh, the... Uh, the prolific knitter did in pinks and I had these this blue yarn so the top of it is Lana Grossa silk hair in the marine colorway I think it's number 043 and I'm holding that with Zen Yarn Garden Serenity 20 in the color Tiger's Eye and it's a very tonal very very tonal yarn with a lot of light blue and dark blue and then that marine mohair over top of it just gives it that really deep rich color so i decided for the body to use rowan felted tweed and i think this is just called gray um, the color number is 177 but you can see all the blue flecks in it, and it's exactly the same color blue as in the, uh, the fingering weight and the mohair together. So I think this is gonna be really good. Mm -hmm. I have the other sleeve picked up and ready to start. It's just, mm, I haven't blocked any of it yet. I just wanted to see Oh, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did leave. I think this sleeve might be a little bit short, so I left it on one of the um, stitch holders until I block it to see if I need to add a little bit to it. And of course, um, just as a reminder, all of the sleeve decreases have a light bulb marker in them, and I leave those there until I get the other sleeve done just to make sure that I'm doing decreases at the same rate but really really exciting and good 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're sort of doing a knit along. <laughs> Yes, well, not really. Tammy's way ahead of me. <laughs> well, you, it won't take you long because you've really made such great progress on those other two. So Yeah, yeah. For sure. So I think you probably also have another whip. Am I right? You're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> it is, it's the Robinia by Ann Vinsel. And I haven't done a whole lot on this, but I do have the front. Oh, oh wow. Wow, so look at that gorgeousness. And oh, the back. So pretty. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting because when I started this, this was completely flat. So I'm hoping when I block it, it's going to lay flat. So I've decided I'm going to block it once I get to the sleeve separation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. But anyway, those, it's got some little bit of speckles in it, which I actually love. Oh my gosh, yes. So, yes, it's a very, wow. very pretty pattern. And let's see, so the yarn I'm using for the main color is the Ario Tweed by Cascade Yarns in the colorway navy. It's got lots of little speckles color speckles which wow. that's I, beautiful uh, do you remember where you bought this yeah little knits, uh, little knits. okay yeah. so this isn't mm -hmm. just continued right it's i like, don't know that it is okay. right and we had we've had really good luck with cascade yarns yeah and this is so you can't even know how it's very lightweight light. mm -hmm. this is i mean it says it's 100 grams right, right. so but it's baby alpaca acrylic and merino and it's just it's really it's light. It's so like fluffy. air. It's yeah, like yes. that uh, drops air almost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If I had a hundred gram skein, regular skein, you'd be able to really see. Yeah. Because that one's got to be twice as it's fluffy. Huge. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's so soft. But and then I'm hold and then I'm also using this Isliger Isliger Eco Soft, and I'm trying to think. The colorway is. E6S, <laughs> so whatever, there you go, that's a good, and I'm holding it with, this is a, um, it's the Pearl Soho Tussock in the colorway Tea Rose. Oh, that's gorgeous. So I'm yeah, holding those rose. together because I thought it, I just wanted a little extra something because I felt like just these two colors together, I'm just bored with it. <laughs> yeah, that peach makes it just, just a hue. You can just mm -hmm. see something yeah. in there that it just gives it just that little, a little, little bit warmth. of interest. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And it, went, it goes really fast. It's a 16 gauge. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love that. Yes. Gotta love that. that. <laughs> That's where I'm leaning these days. Yeah, <laughs> and even though you're knitting color work flat, that's not hard, is it? No, because yeah, I, I can't do it with two hand, my left hand because I don't know about the pearl. It's I, hard to know, pearl. Yeah. I can't. I haven't gotten that down the purling with stuff in my left hand, but so I just make sure I get my yarns in the right place, and and I've even done tried had to do some. Uh, oh, catching your float. Catching yeah. some I floats. See that, yeah. yeah so, so I figured it out so far. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Really pretty. Thank you. And that one also has balloon sleeves, I think. Yeah. It I does. got into the balloon sleeve phase, I think. <laughs> yeah. As long as they're wearable sleeves, it doesn't matter. It, yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. know. I think they I just think they look elegant. They do. You're not gonna be cooking in it, so you don't <laughs> <Yeah>, right. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to care, be careful if you're having a meal and you reach for your wine glass over, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over your plate. But what wow. else do you have? So my next sweater is the same one Tammy just showed, the Field Sweater by Camilla Vaud. <clears throat> That's pretty too. Yeah. yeah, since I've last showed it, it's been a while. I was still working on the uh, the grains at the top in the brown color. 
So, it's, it's been a real work of love <laughs> for me. <laughs> so, the yarns that I'm using on this is we have the Drops Alpaca, and the colorway in this is 618. And then I'm holding that with the Barocco Ariel. And the colorway on this one is 3433. And so it kind of adds a little bit of depth into the, um, the brown color. Because <clears throat> this one's sport weight, and then I add my lace to make that a DK. And then for the background color, I am using the Knit Picks City Tweed DK in colorway Snowbank. I really like that so, color. Yeah, that's beautiful. It sure looks an so, awful lot like the Rowan Felted Tweed, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I think the speckles might be a little bit bigger in that. But yeah. Yeah. I just had a lot of problems with tightness issues on this. And so I finally got it to the point where it it fits well and it's loose enough. <laughs> it's but beautiful. I can pretty much tell you this will be my last field sweater. <laughs> I know she's working on one that's a bottom up oh. and it has all these beautiful grains. Oh, and really? I'm like, uh, no, I'm not making that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I am either. So it, I might have to make that one. Yeah, <laughs> it is just it's it's epic. Yeah, when, it, you, when you get those grains done, you feel like you've accomplished some some, some major some, work there. Really big. Yeah. And so I mean, I <clears throat> I'm at the part where I'm just knit, 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 knit. So hopefully it's going to turn out just beautiful and I'll be very happy with yeah. it. I am pretty happy with it. I did block it and everything fits right. And so, so I've made it through. Yeah. <laughs> even those, those grains are but, a challenge. I mean, even I used a size are. seven needle. You said you used a size six. Correct. And on the left hand needle, because that's not the one you get gauged with, we used a two or a three. I think I think I started with a two and I was afraid I was gonna bend it. Oh because when you knit into those grains into the back loop, it's it's quite a challenge. Um mm -hmm. and it is. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I went up to a size three just so there'd be a little bit more metal. But it was it was really difficult, you know. The difference between a seven and a three, you should really be able to get in there. But man, oh man, not that easy. So oh anyway, gosh, I'm glad that gosh. you've made it past your grains. Yes, I am too. And so, so I, we're not telling you not to make it. It's just quite the challenge. It is a challenge. Um, I think it's absolutely lovely. So I do have one more whip. And it is the August hat. And so I'm making this as a gift. And I had a bunch of yarn left over, so I decided that I didn't want, it was just way too pretty to not do anything with. Uh -huh. So um, I oh, started. Oh, Tammy, how lovely Isn't that, that is. pretty? That is gorgeous. <laughs> well, yeah. that happens to be my color. I know. <laughs> so I, I will put on the screen, of course, who it's by. I know that Kelborn, Will, Kelborn Woolens a few years ago put out 12 hat patterns. It's a year of hats and this was the August hat. Um, I hope that doesn't flip up when it when I block it. I hope it, but it's really trying to. So this has got these that beautiful, oh my gosh, it looks really good on camera, the Latvian braids on it. And I just started the color work on top. So um, I'm holding, uh, so Oh, did I bring the label? Yes, I did bring the label. I had some shepherd's wool. I had 89 grams of shepherd's wool left over from when I made my... Kava. Kava from mm. uh, Thea Coleman, Baby Cocktails. 
and I thought, boy, that's some great wool. So I could grab that. And then I was trying to find a color that went nicely with it. Well, I had some Patton's Classic Wool DK Superwash left over, and it's a very, it's called Flagstone. So it's almost a gray color. And I had a 10 pack of this, so <laughs> I made a vest out of it a while back and I still have a lot more. So then I also had some drops, Kid Silk. There were 13 grams left in just the natural white colorway. And I'm holding those two together, but it really, that white lightens up a lot. that gray so much that it almost looks like it's a white with mm -hmm. that purple. So yes. I really, really love this. Um, we'll see who ends up getting it, but it's not... Oh, you don't know who you're giving it to yet? I kind of, I have an idea, but... Um, That's beautiful. I'm just, since it's a gift, I'm just not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> yeah. We'll wait and see how that goes, but I that love color it. work. Mm -hmm. I got the bug from doing the Wildwood sweater. Mm -hmm. I really, really love color work. I feel like that's my jam. I'd like to do some more. I yeah, to do some more. But that's really uh, nice and easy. Your turn. What I you don't got? have any left. No more? No more? Do you have no, one? No, I have one more to on. show. Okay. Go for it. What I have is the Chunky Basket Weave Baby Blanket by Peach Unicorn. And... Wow. That is huge. She's made progress. Wow. Yes, Big old has. progress on this. Wow. That is so pretty. <laughs> and of course, it's is it blue or purple? Light pale blue. It is the baby blue. Yep. Baby blue color. So I'm using... The Bernat baby blanket in the color white baby blue. Wow. So this is a super bulky yarn and I'm using a size 11 needles. <laughs> wow. So it's just, you know, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm getting there. I'm really getting there to you get are. this completed, but I'm excited. I have a, a grandson that's going to be born in February. So I want to make at least one blanket. This is my first one, so we'll see. And maybe some other oh, things, great. some other baby things. Oh yeah, some we've more got to all come. kinds of wonderful little baby um, patterns Yes, that are free that I used with my grandbabies when they were tiny little creatures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so this, this is 100% polyester, so it can be put in the wash and very soft and lovely. Yeah. That's so, so coming back from Rhinebeck, it was like an 11 hour drive with some stops sprinkled in along the way, but 11 hours in the car, and you got a lot done I, on I that. I did. So, mm -hmm. this was pretty much, I did work on this on the, on the ride, I think both to and from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you knit you almost a, a whole done. ball of that, didn't you? On, during oh, yes. the ride back. <laughs> For sure. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, finish that. Yeah. Wow. Good job, so you. So, move them right along with that. <laughs> okay, so I don't have any more to show, but I do have a couple that I want to talk about. I have a couple of languishing whips, not, not really... Okay, one of them is languishing, <laughs> and the other I have worked a little bit on. Um, I did bring the Helia. You know what? I'll just show the Helia real quick. So I have one that I have worked on quite a bit and just not in the last couple of weeks. I have um, one sleeve almost finished and I'm, so this is the Helia by Joanna Ang. I should start with that. So pretty. It is so pretty. Janet wore her, what's the other Joanna Ang pattern that you? 
Um, fairy bouquet. Fairy bouquet. And I got all excited about that. I am right to the point on the sleeves where I start the decreases. I don't know if you're familiar with the pattern. It will have been shown and hopefully the sleeves are showing in that. But I'm knitting this in McMullen fiber and we ran into McMullen fiber at Wool and Folk and we thought for sure we were going to get back over there. I really wanted to buy some more of her yarn. They are it, the, their yarn is just absolutely mm -hmm. beyond gorgeous. Here's the label. Uh, the colorway that I'm using is Sense and Sensibility, and I'm holding that with Passion Yarns Angora Love Mohair. So it's mohair and silk. I don't know why it's called Angora, because there's no Angora in it, but um, <laughs> the colorway is called Frozen, and holding those two together, it's just... You can see all these gorgeous speckles in here, and that comes from that beautiful McMullen yarn. So anyway, I looked, we never got back to their booth because of the overcrowding, and it was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we got back, I looked on the website, and there was nothing up there yet because I'm pretty sure she took it all down to take it mm -hmm to the show hoping to sell a lot and I really really hope that happened me too um but I intend to go back out and look because I'm definitely going to be buying some of that yarn so here's what it looks like in the skein look at those gorgeous speckles oh my gosh this yarn by itself is just That's so oh lovely gosh. I know oh right gosh. So it's 80% oh superwash, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's the posh sock. So the posh oh, is man. the 10% cashmere. And it is, I mean, oh. aside from her colorways being gorgeous, just over the top mm -hmm. gorgeous. Very it's, um, soft and beautiful. It's <laughs> really great <laughs> yarn. So um, I'll be out there ordering some more. And I... I, she's one of the vendors who probably um, had problems like the rest did. She was in the big tent, but it was so overcrowded was. that she really couldn't walk around and shop. And we just felt like we needed to move on and, you know, try to get to a space that was not so crowded. So give McMullen Fiber some love because they're product is amazing and they deserve it just there's a whole list um, I want to say that the guys uh, Kevin and Ray needles at the ready for sure have a list of all of the, all the vendors. fiber artists and vendors um, who were there at Woolen Folk and could not get the love they deserved because of the overcrowding but they've got a list of all of them with links to the websites mm -hmm. so if are they doing a dollar donation if you go to they are doing it for um I couldn't remember if that was for the vendors or it's not for the vendors okay. it's there were a lot of accessibility issues there um you know we're all very fortunate that we we're didn't good. didn't require a device or an animal to get around but there were a lot of people there who do and um, they're actually for everybody who goes out to the site and tags that link as they purchase something um, go watch the needles at the ready podcast they very eloquently mm -hmm. um, described exactly how they're gonna do it mm -hmm. so but Right. F watch that follow them give yeah, everybody some love mm -hmm. because they are gonna donate up to a thousand dollars um yeah match up to a thousand dollars if we all can go out there and purchase it's it's a gift along of sorts purchasing from those vendors but you know you can give to yourself because i intend to give to myself <laughs> right so it's, it's in their show notes on their yeah. um, rhinebeck recap yeah. Yeah. yeah and i went out there and looked because there are several vendors that we haven't even been to. No, no, <laughs> I know. And when I, we I, were there, right? So I mean, I was looking at the vendors and going to some of the sites. Some of the sites, like you say, there's no yarns available right now because right. they are 
they're going trying to, to get other it all festivals back in. and yeah. so on and so forth. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but um, yeah, give yeah. them show. We're them definitely some love. gonna give them some love if too. you can. If you can show them some love, do. If you can't, then it's okay that's, too. That's fine because yeah. you know we're not we're not gonna, we're not pushy at all. It's mm-hmm. just that we want to show support. So the next um, to finish is my Lyra. I don't know if y'all remember that that was in the works. It's a Natasha Hornby pattern that I started last winter maybe and was hoping to get it done to wear in the spring and I didn't. So I need to get on that because it's DK weight and it's this gorgeous slip stitch which I'll have had her picture in there and um, next time hopefully I've shown it a little bit of love and you'll be able to see <laughs> but I feel like if I don't talk about these and hold myself accountable <laughs> I I'm going to cast on something new which you know I probably will anyway but yeah, at least it's I'm hard gonna, not to do <laughs> I want to finish right. something and pick up something even if I pick up something and cast something on at least I'm trying to get into that whip pile so mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, are we ready? Are we thirsty? You yeah, want to head over to the are. tasting table? Yes, yes, we are. Do you have anything else to talk about? Because I feel like, aside from my Wool of the Andes that I bought for the Sandy's Witch Hat, I didn't buy any yarn. No, not since. Not, <laughs> not since. Not since yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, though, because we got to show so. those vendors some love. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see you over at the tasting table. Cool. So today we are tasting the Hedges Family Estate uh, Syrah. It's a 2018 and it's from Red Mountain in Washington outside of uh, near Walla Walla. And mm -mm. yeah, right. Let's give that a shot. We did taste it just a little bit ago, but you're not going to be surprised by the the characteristics because mm-hmm. <laughs> we always seem to do the mm. same ones on the bold side this Ooh. is slightly tannic dry very mm. dry and maybe slightly acidic so yeah it smells very it's nice. very nice what are you getting out of that some leather. i smell that earthy or yeah the earthy, earthy leather, leather. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah any smoke mm. Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit. So Ross kind of the... But um, this one mentions oak, vanilla, and chocolate. That's mm-hmm. one of the, the biggest mentions. From the barrel, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then um, <clears throat> dark fruits like blueberries and blackberries and dark cherries. and Yeah, it's really good. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, it's funny trying to discern all those flavors. It's like, I know it's really it's hard, hard to segment all that in your mind as you're tasting. Mm-hmm. Well, I was there last year, this time last year, and they um, let us do a barrel mm-hmm. tasting, and that was the. It wasn't this vintage. It was another vintage of their Syrah, and oh, mg, it was so good. So then I ended up buying a. A couple of the <laughs> previous vintages. So. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wow, yeah, that's that is delicious. delicious. Yeah, yes. and they do organic, or, organic farming. So I really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. They have a really wonderful um, red blend that's very affordable. Well, I guess it depends on your perspective. But. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just not one of the real high end uh-uh. ones no, that we've no, had. No. And this one. The price point on this is about $45. So to me, I feel like this would taste really good with lamb chops on the grill. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it? Like Mm -hmm. something that's like a a barbecue. I feel like that would make the, that Syrah Mm -hmm. flavor just elevate. Let's see. So... Degrees during mm. the days, which says very warm. Oak profile, 69% American and 31% French oak. Vineyards was Hedges Vineyard and 100% Syrah. 
produced March of 2020. So that must have been when they bottled it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely recommend. Yeah, <laughs> it's delicious. A really good bottle of wine. It is good. Yeah. Somebody was asking about the bottle we had on our Rhinebeck episode. We didn't really talk about it, but it was Trefethen. Mm -hmm. And it was the Cab Cabernet Sauvignon, and I can't remember the year. Do you happen to? I think it was 2018. Maybe? I feel like it might have been a 2018, yeah. But it was delicious. It and was. So, um, <laughs> sorry we didn't go into detail. We were trying to keep that episode kind of short, and we, we were able to keep it to just at an hour, right? <laughs> because of all the photos. But we didn't want to pull any out. Yeah, right. We felt like we really needed to add them all in because of so many wonderful people. Right. But, um, Definitely. Didn't want yeah. to leave anybody out. Yeah. So we may have some new viewers. So welcome again, everybody. Yeah. And if you mm -hmm. like what we talked about today, please like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. It really helps the channel. Yes. Gets us out there in front of more people, more like-minded knitting friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So anyway, mm -hmm. I guess it's time to go. Yeah. Right? Thanks yeah. for watching. Thanks for yeah. watching. And yeah. if you can't yeah. be, be with, with the, the wine, wine you love, love the wine you're with. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Yum.